to all those listening out there and to the one editing this podcast, um, this next section is going to be riddled with spoils of all things Avengers. Um, until you get to the TV shows on Disney, we haven't been paying attention. We haven't watched that, any of that, so don't worry. As long as you, as long as you know everything through End Games, you should be fine. Uh, the first twenty movies of the series of the Avengers, you're good to go. There was a time, believe it or not, folks out there, that Captain America was not a popular Marvel character. Gasp! Yeah. Gasp. Gasp! There was a time that Iron Man was not that popular a Marvel character. Well, they made a video game about him. Yeah. Well. And it was a Nintendo game, do you remember? No, it was a Sega game. No, wait, that was Mega Man. Oh, yeah. That wasn't even Iron Man. I love Mega Man. Gasp! Yeah, gasp, that's right. In fact, as far as the Avengers go, the only one that was really truly popular didn't come until almost all the way through it, and that was Spider-Man. You know, Thor yeah. wasn't exactly the most popular. What about the Hulk? The Hulk was popular. They've made some Hulk movies before. There was a TV show, too. Yeah. Um, but what Disney has managed to do with the Avengers is take a lot of B-list characters and turn them into A-listers. Well, they were all the, they, they were the Avengers in sure. the comic books, though. Sure. But they were actually... But uh, they were able to branch out into different movies after that. Well, but you also have to remember that they weren't really... Uh, and the Avengers were written as a... Um, as a uh, com- as competition uh, for the Justice League. Sure, yeah. The Justice League was written first, and they said, hey, you gotta, we got to write something, and they came up with the Avengers so that they could combat you know, the popularity of the Justice League, mm-hmm. uh, which is really funny if you think about it in the long run because the Justice League movies kind of stink. Like they, I mean, don't get me wrong. They're okay, but they're, uh, not, they're, not, they're not the Avengers. They're not what they movies, did with the Avengers. They've also, Marvel at this point, or Disney with Marvel, has trickled the story down to where the, the water is just murky. Uh, you can't now. even keep up with no. it anymore. There's no... They, at least it used to be that they released in such an order, and it was movies. It wasn't TV shows and stuff like that, what they're doing with Disney Plus now. You know, you could actually get in there and actually watch all of these movies in order. Yeah. Now it's so murky, you can't see any Well, of you it. know, the thing about it is, though, like, if you haven't been in it since the beginning, like, you know, uh, my wife, Micah, I tried to get her, like, oh, hey, yeah, we've got to catch you up on what's going on in Marvel. It was 20 movies to, yeah. get, to get to end games. Right. You know? And that is not like an easy task no, to walk a, through twenty an, movies. That's an adventure. That's a year's worth of Friday nights, right easy. there. Easy, yeah, yeah. But uh, anyway, I don't know. I just I feel like somebody needed to put Captain America in his place. <laughs> like there just there needed to be a reminder in society that hey, Cap, he's step really, on down. <laughs> this is really only a twenty year fixation. Yeah, you know, you've existed for a lot longer than that. You know, but what they did with that first movie, that first Captain American movie, was pretty impressive CGI work. You know, to put, um, what's the actor's name? I can't think of it. His face on that real skinny body oh, for yeah. the first half of it. No. You now, know? I, I understand what they've done. I just, I need to point out that if someone else came along and played Captain America, it wouldn't do well. That, I'm not not, and they have a new Captain America now that it's like the millennia has been passed down. Yeah. But if you said I'm going to do a completely different Captain America movie, sure. I just don't think that it would not in connection well. to the Avengers. not in connection to the Avengers, yeah. not even in a different multiverse or whatever. And see, the thing about it is, is Spider Man. How many Spider Mans have there been? A lot, right? And they've been able to tie it back into the multiverse sure. to make it actually kind of fun. Well, they just did the same thing with right. uh, how many Batmans have there been? They just did the same thing with Michael Keaton. But that's the thing is there hasn't the, Batman is successful in the because Justice League in the in the Flash movie. Batman is successful because it's Batman. I think Superman that, is successful because it's Superman. I think that they were hoping that Michael Keaton coming back would add to the hype of the Flash movie, which bombed in the box office. Right. So well, I don't know. I just think you know, superhero movies are just kind of drying up right now. Well, and it's, it's been we've been doing this for we're twenty, to, we're twenty five years, we're, folks. We, we are trying to do too much with CGI too. What happened to stunt driving oh, yeah. and good chases and things that everything it's a lot is cheaper done to do with it. CGI? A lot now. cheaper to do it on CGI. I know, but it takes away from the authenticity of it all. Yeah. If if you can, if you as the viewer can see that it is all fake, what is fun about it anymore? Yeah. 
I don't know. I guess they're just continuing to try to get to a point where it doesn't look fake. They'll get there eventually, and then we'll be really screwed when it comes to everything politics wise. Yeah, we have the deep fakes video, deep fake videos that well, we already disprove got everything. The Santas has already used Trump's AI voice in his ad. Oh yeah, yeah, in one of his ads, and they're, I mean they're demanding apologies and some of the other things. I, I, AI will be in politics. It's just DeSantis is just the first one to take the to take the cut. Uh, so anyway, I don't know. We'll just have to see what kind of happens in the midst of that. Captain, Captain America, America, you have been put on notice. Step down. The failing podcast has got your number, sir. Yes. Give me my Batman, my Superman, my Spider-Man. It is t- your time has come. Iron Man? Well, he's already dead, so... Welcome. Fresh out the box. Stop. Look and watch. Ready yet? Get set. It's... The Bowling Podcast. Eat my shark. Not the mama. Not the mama. <laughs> Goodbye. Today I wanted to talk about something that is very important to me. It's important to you? It's important to me that we hear from you on this subject. Well, I was going to say, I just looked and saw the paper and got a little bit excited. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm going to introduce it. Okay. Okay. Because I think that what everybody needs to know is today we are going to talk about a magic castle. No, no. Not the magic castle you're thinking of, all you that went to Hogwarts, my Harry Potter fans. Mm Mm-hmm. I understand, and, and you know, there's probably another time for a deep dive. But when we talk about the Magic Castle, we're talking about the 1990s Magic Castle with what is it? What's the what are the names of the people? Well, it was owned um, back then by Mark Wilson and Nani Darnell. Mark Wilson and Nani Darnell, and if you don't know those names, you're like most Americans. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if if you're listening to this podcast and you're like in your 80s or 70s, you might actually remember Mark Wilson. 80s or 70s, Dad'd be smacking you around right now. <laughs> Dad would remember Mark. He would. Yeah, re- but he's not in his 70s. I said 80s or 70s. Yeah, Dad's still in his 60s. But did Dad see Mark Wilson when he was performing live? Yes. Oh, <laughs> uh, not live. In your, it was on a show called the uh, Magic Circus. Dad, I'm sorry. If you remember the Magic Circus and you're in your 50s? No, 60s. 60s. Yeah, 60s, your 70s. 60s, 70s, 80s, you might remember a show called The Magic Circus with Mark Wilson and Nani Darnell. Mm-hmm. And these two individuals were influential uh, in the Garrison household, our culture. Well, at least in a piece of the Garrison household. Yes. Well, they were a household name, that's for sure. They're important to you, therefore they were important to us. Oh. Well, thank you. Yeah, I know. We have, we're we unified. So, I have introduced... Take it away, Benji. You know the great? <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't been called my stage name in too it's many been, years. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, like um, a lot of younger kids, um, I once saw a magic kit walking through a Costco Oh, close to Christmas time. Ah, were you holding a hot dog? No, I think we were filling up on samples that day, ah, if I remember correctly. Sample day. Church yeah. Sunday. Right after church. Samples. Yep. Hit the Costco, hit the samples, mm-hmm. get a hot dog on the way home. Hot dog on the way home. Yeah. I always got a pretzel. The hot dogs made me feel a little gaggy. Yeah. yeah. Fascinating. Yep. Anyway, saw the magic kit. I said, Mom, Dad, I'd, I'd like to have that for Christmas. Oh, yeah. Dad? Dad thought it was a great idea. As as he usually does. So he likes anything to do with showmanship and um, building and arts and just fun stuff like sure. that. He always. So I, I had already asked for, you know, I'd had my whole, li- we were close to Christmas. It had to be a few days away mm-hmm. um, when I said I'd really like to have that for Christmas, you know, and I didn't expect it at all. But right. Lo and behold, Christmas morning. Deep under the tree. In typical dad fashion, well, mom too. Both mom and dad have always really liked Christmas, but right. And we always give dad credit, though. Yes, we not only got the uh, Power Rangers complete uh, Zord set. They must have had a good year. You know, I remember this year because yeah. of that. Yeah, we got the Zord set. It, was it when they sold the rental house? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I also got this magic kit. Right. And um, I think that part of the excitement of getting it that morning launched me into, uh, you know, starting to learn a lot of these illusions right. and stuff. And so I did. I, I worked my way through this book, and I learned pretty much everything that you could do in this cheapo box that they had. And um, developed enough of an interest in it that Dad subscribed me, or subscribed me, he started buying Every additional year for Christmas time, he'd get me a VHS cassette purchase tape of Mark Wilson and Nani Darnell's Intro to Magic. Now, for all you younger listeners out there... Well, it was Mark Wilson's Intro to Magic. Yeah. Nani Darnell was um, was her, his stage assistant, but she ran a lot of the business side. Right. Yeah. For, for all you younger listeners out there, when we say a video VHS subscription, this is actually a lot like buying an online subscription to classes. The only difference is you get one uh, over the course of a period, and it came on a big cassette tape. You'd have to rewind it after you were done. You put it in the VCR, and you press the rewind button when it was over. So, you know, obviously, you got 25 tricks on right. this, and it would also, they would send it with the every, props. Every month you'd get 25? No, 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 no. This oh. was like, I, you, you'd get volume, you buy volume, volume one, one, and it came with the props right. that you need for some of them. Some of them were make-at-home props, right. Right. you know, and then um, I'd learn my way through that, and then I'd ask Dad for volume two, right. you know, and there were several volumes, but they also owned... Um, Getting back to what you started talking about in this segment, the Magic Castle. The Magic right. Castle. You was have to say it. The, the Magic, Magic Castle. Castle. It was very mystical. Yeah. On SpongeBob, there's a time that he goes to the Magic Island. It oh, also really? has a castle on it. Well, so That's not this. The Magic Castle was owned also by Mark Wilson and Nani Darnell. And um, it was an exclusive club... For professional magicians, where they would go and perform their tricks uh-huh. for each other. Right. It was like a dinner club. This was a thing. 